My name is Kalan Nibon Rishkaiman and I'm the chief of the Jamaican Hummingbird Tribe. As chief, my responsibility is the well-being of our people, being that representative, that public image of our people. Because we have suffered so much that through the paper genocide being written out of history. So now my role is really to be an ambassador, so to speak, to the public and also that healer, medicine person, Behike, for our tribe. For Jamaica, whose indigenous name is Yame or Yameka. <laughs> What took place is that the first people of this island were the Yame people and the academics are the ones that coined the phrase Taino. Previously they realized the connection between our indigenous people here and the Arawakan people of mainland South America, mostly in the Venezuelan region. What happened over time is that they had coined the phrase Arawak and island Arawak for the people in the Caribbean. Um, in the schools you know, as things happen over time, that Chinese telephone type of vibe, they dropped off the word island and there started to be this confusion between the Arawakan tribes, who are the true Arawakan people. So the term was used by academics, Taino. And where they got that from is when Columbus went to Dominican Republic, he had indigenous people with him from his first voyage when he went to the Bahamas. And they saw the people on the island and were saying, Daka Taino, to the people, the indigenous people they saw. They understood Daka meant I am in Arawakan languages. So they assumed they were saying I am Taino in the sense that that is who we are. But Taino actually means relative. So they were saying I am a relative. For us and for me, the ancestors are connected through our tradition to the Semis. We have figures that represent ancestors. The, the ancestors that are given a lot of respect and that are honored and passed down from generation to generation. Their teachings, their wisdom, their knowledge are at a higher level almost deified in our traditions. So a, a common example here in Jamaica would be amongst the Maroon peoples, Nani of the Maroons, that is revered to this almost mythical status. So within the Taino culture, that's why you know, there's that strong correlation between our groups, is we have similar views. There's the ancestor of your family, which we call opia, which again is connected to the term dopi. That those spirits come at night in the forms of bats or in the forms of owls, night animals, and they would bring guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to the people. And then there are those that are revered by larger groups, even outside of their family, that are caciques, that are chiefs, that are medicine people, that are people that have been revered to levels of, of speaking with the sun, and, and, and having command over the sea. Wariko, wariko, aura, usikati wabo, huyem. From the winds of the south, we call on the medicine of the turkey vulture to bring us cleansing and healing, to remove from us what does not serve in a good way. Understanding who we are, yes, we are mixed people. Or people that have European, African, and for some of us, indigenous to this region ancestry. And when you understand that, they understand that they revered nature. They revered the land. They found it sacred, the land that we walk upon. Mother Earth, Mother Gaia, we come to you for healing. We call on your medicine, you protect the little ones. There are certain sites and certain spaces that gives us a deeper connection and just this space of peace and understanding. And when we open ourselves to listen to the guidance of the things around us and that deeper connection is open, it helps us to navigate the, the things that seem so challenging in our life. So for example, each morning as a part of our tradition, we greet the sun. And we're greeting the sun in the simplest form as we teach to the young ones is to say, what are we happy for today? The day has just started. What are we happy for today? And we share that with those in our space and we reinforce that because sometimes when we're in a space of darkness, we need someone else to help us to see the light that it is there. 
It is always there, it is constant. The sun will always rise. And it helps us to move through the difficult moments in our life, the challenging moments in our life. And to remember that we are related to all of these elements. For our indigenous cultures, grounding represents that space of connecting to the earth and the elements being mindful. The wind is blowing, which direction is the wind coming from? At night time, do you have an anchor? Are you aware of simple constellations like the Big Dipper, the Southern Cross, Orion's Belt? These things help us to structure and align ourselves, something to return to. There's so much deep teaching behind the concept of the medicine wheel, which is walking through these points, south, west, north, east. If you pay attention, there are certain birds that come from these directions. There are certain times these birds come. Wariya Soraya Kwaibe. From the direction of the west, we call on the medicine of the owl, the medicine of the bat, the medicine from those who guide us in the night. There are different moon cycles, right? And with the different moon cycles, there are different things that are happening where you are. And it is from that that we'll be able to pass on this knowledge, these teachings, these what's called folklore traditions on, on medicine, on timekeeping, daykeeping, on being mindful of the seasons and how to interact, when to pick plants, when not to pick plants. All of this helps us to remain in balance. On a day-to-day -day level, I would share the, the simplest form of it, which is every morning there is a gratitude ceremony. Some would call a sunrise ceremony. It is honoring the four cardinal points, being mindful of the medicine that comes from each point. So the sunrise brings a certain medicine, the sunset brings a certain medicine, the north direction carries wisdom, the south direction carries medicine. And one of the teachings that we we'll have is that when you catch the first rays, those red rays of the sun, it grants you wisdom to go through the day. And the concept behind it is that it reinforces in you that everything happens from a set intention and that there are anchors in life that we can maneuver and walk with. So imagine knowing as bad as your day is that tomorrow comes another day and another sunrise, another opportunity. So it gives you that power, that willpower, that strength and that fortitude to push through because it reminds you that there are things that are temporal and there are things in life that are permanent. And even from just that mental space of grounding to something so powerful, so constant, so nurturing in our life, it shifts us. Create the one known by many names. Yenking Fong, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this weather, for your blessing, for your love. Answer. Rituals. Rituals help with grounding. Rituals are basically practice that you have devoted yourself to, to doing every day. Alright? Now, there are things that we already do every day, but we're not conscious that these are stemming from rituals. We bathe every day. We cleanse our bodies every day. We have certain hygienic practices that we do every day. Now imagine each bath that you take is a conscious bath. And each time that you're cleansing yourself, you're consciously saying to yourself that as I wash my head, I'm clearing my thoughts. As I wash my hands, I'm clearing my actions. As I wash my chest, I'm clearing my heart. As I wash my feet, it's where I go. Things I've stepped in, things that I may carry with me. It's being, the concept of being grounded is being conscious. This is an amaraka. It is made of solid wood. And there is, again, conscious medicine in the creation of the amaraka. Now, we most are aware of the maraka, which is like a calabash gourd which holds within its seeds. Amaraka is a medicinal maraka that is used by medicine people, behikes and some caciques. And it's a ceremony in creating it because the concept is, how do you cut the solid piece of wood to end up with a ball in the center? And what it teaches you in the practice of making the amaraka is that we can create beauty from all of the elements that we already have. And it also teaches us that while the outside world may not be aware of what is taking place inside of us, when we move, it creates waves. So everything has a conscious message and a teaching behind it.